It all began in 2013. Two years ago, I led a faculty seminar group to China. Um, we were in China for about two weeks, and I was the only representative from the College of Science. As an ecologist and as a photographer, anywhere I go, I'm always looking for evidence of the insect and plant interactions in the natural world. Pollination is one of many ecosystem services where there are processes that occur in the natural world that benefit us without us necessarily knowing that they're happening. Pollinators are involved in the fertilization of plants, including crops. In 2005, pollinators' contribution to the agricultural economy was estimated to be $206 billion. Because of their major contributions, it is important to document the pollinator population and seek out ways to sustain it. So, Dr. Hines and Dr. Day put a plan together. We were talking and trying to see if there was anything we could do, and so this idea of looking at pollinators and pollination kind of bubbled up, and we got a proposal put together. We decided to apply for a grant through the Asian Network, funded by the Friedman Foundation, uh, we applied for that grant to do research on pollinator diversity in China. Uh, got the grant. A little bit of serendipity and perhaps some luck. And... And, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Starting in 2014 and continuing in 2015, Dr. Hines and Dr. Day led groups of students to China to conduct field observations, documenting the activities of pollinators. At each observation, we'd be in an urban area where you would see wildflowers and then we'd haphazardly pick patches up of a couple flowers and then do 10 minute observations with a partner. One person would act as a recorder and one person would orally explain what a pollinator was doing. You can help too. Dr. Hines and Dr. Day are leading another team of students this summer and there's still time to join. I'm hoping that we can keep going back multiple years uh, to, to really build up the data set to really get a better view of the patterns over a longer period of time. So not only will you be involved in important research, but you will also have the unique opportunity to study abroad. I'll, I always tell students when I'm doing my info sessions or study abroad table or study abroad fairs that it's a once in a lifetime opportunity that will change you. Studying abroad and doing field research on a global level made me really realize that I enjoy field research quite a bit. That really is probably the best part of the job. It's just seeing them before they go and seeing them when they get back and how much it really transforms their outlook on life. The benefits are, are enormous. Uh, again, personal for the students themselves in terms of personal growth, self-discovery. There are connections that are made that that can't be made on campus. Mm -hmm. Every day is kind of its own adventure. I think hiking the Great Wall was my favorite part because until you see it, you don't really realize its magnitude. Students have to work with a study abroad advisor throughout the whole process. They choose a program. We walk them through logistical planning. We do orientation sessions that go over culture shock, emergency situations. So we work with our academic advisors to make sure that courses uh, will meet major and minor requirements. That way they're not adding any extra time on to their four years. I knew that it would be harder to fit in study abroad because I was a transfer. So like having a three week summer program was ideal for me. Yes, you're taking time away from the United States, you're not going to see your family for quite some time. And there are some costs involved with it. Study abroad is 100%, 120% worth it. <laughs>